everybody, and welcome to Glory Bell Church Online. In just a few minutes, we're about to start our service, but right now would be a great time to share this link with your friends and family. Here at Glory Bell Church, we are all about introducing people to Jesus and making heaven crowded. And although we're not super religious, we are super relational, and we'd love to connect with you. If you'd like to connect with us, text GB Connect to 97000. In just a couple minutes, Pastor Chuck is going to be bringing an incredible message. But right now, stand on your feet, clap along, sing along, lift your hands, and join us as we go into worship. So glad that you joined us today. Why don't you worship with us? Come on. Say, come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Yeah. See what our Savior has done. See how His love all becomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Yeah.
thank you that you do great things. God, there is nothing that's impossible for you. All things are possible. So we stand firm on your promises. We know that you're our firm foundation. You are our cornerstone. We trust in you. We place all of our hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be.
Jesus, for your presence. Lord, we thank you that your presence changes everything. Glory Bell family, 
So glad that you joined us. Thanks again to Hope City and the worship team. Uh, I am delighted that you are watching Church Online. Again, I wish that you were with us in the room, but for now, uh, just know that we love you. We're praying for you, and we cannot wait to get back in the same room. I'm excited today for our sermon, but before we jump into that, something that we do every week is our Glory Bell Declaration. We're going to put it on the screen for you. Don't just say it after me, but say it together with me. Are you ready? I'm here on purpose. Purpose because I have a purpose. My mind is open and my heart is ready to receive. God is not finished with me yet. My best days, my best days, my best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life because Jesus lives in me. Come on, that fires me up. I hope you believe that. Say it enough. Uh, get it in your heart so that what you believe is what you become. Our best days are truly right in front of us. All right, if you're taking notes, I'm going to share with you on this subject. Get ready for it. Stay woke. Stay woke. Uh, now more than ever is a time for you and I as the people of God to awaken to God's call, God's plan, God's purpose for our lives. And uh, I'm excited. I want to share with you a scripture out of 1 Thessalonians that is, um, it really just sets the tone for the sermon today, but it also gives context uh, for the sermon title, which is, again, if you're saying it at home, stay woke. In fact, I, I just say this really quickly. I love it when we're in the same room together because our church responds. You're vocal. Don't let this virtual church experience change change that. Be vocal. Get on the comments. Uh, let us hear. And I promise you, I will preach better if you preach with me. So say a good amen. Uh, throw up some praise hands emojis, some high five emojis. Uh, let, let Just say preach white boy or something and let me know that you're with me. And I promise you, uh, we're going to do this together. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, I'm going to jump through this really quickly. Now concerning how and when all of this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't need to write you. This is Paul writing. What is he talking about? He's talking about the return of Christ. He says, we don't need to write you for you know know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. I want to pause right there because when I was a kid, I can tell you that that phrase scared me. I'm not even kidding. As a six-year-old, I can remember having what I would call a nightmare now. Uh, maybe then I thought it was a dream, but man, it, I, I can remember dreaming about hell and having this idea that God was going to come back and the rapture was going to happen suddenly and maybe I was going to be left behind because like a thief in the night. But I've got some new understanding of this passage of Scripture and I have great hope for you. So let's continue on. It says, When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin and there will be no escape. It sounds like doom and gloom, right? But here we go. You can't stop there because it doesn't finish. But you aren't in the dark. Did you catch that? But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. So what is he saying? He's saying that for those that are living in darkness, those that aren't awakened, that will, it will happen to them suddenly like a thief in the night. But you and I, as the people of God, we have an understanding. We have a great hope that we can hold on to during uncharted uh, waters, during unprecedented times. We have a hope that the world doesn't have. Come on, somebody say a good amen on that. We don't have to be afraid of a thief at night because we are aware of the signs and the times of what is about to happen in our world. Now, let me just tell you, if you're reading into what I'm saying that to, to tell you that this is the end, you're misreading. Okay, I'm not telling you that this is the end. Just like I said a few weeks ago, Pastor Jimmy Evans, powerful message. This is not the end. God is with us and this is not our home. However, in times like this, it is important that we are awakened to all that God has for us. All right. So here it says, for you are children of the light and the day. We don't belong to the darkness and night. Verse six. So be on your guard, not asleep like others. Another way of saying that is be on your guard. Stay woke. Stay woke. Be aware of what's happened. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear headed, protected, 
by the armor of faith and love. I love that phrase. It says wearing that helmet of confidence of our salvation. Uh, we'll get into this in the coming weeks, but these three things remain. You know that scripture? It says faith, hope, and love. Uh, come on, that's exactly what Paul's referencing right here. It says, For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out His anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when He returns, uh, we can live with Him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. I love how Paul ends that little section of his letter. He says, be encouraged. Don't be alarmed. Christ didn't die for us to us suffer his wrath. No, that covered the wrath of God. So we have a hope of our salvation. Be encouraged in this, but you got to stay woke to understand the times that we're living in. So here we go. Let me just give you a great example. You guys know that we have a newborn at home. Uh, he's somewhere close to two and a half, three months. Adjusted age is like one month. If you don't have kids, I'm sure you've heard stories about this, but a baby changes everything. A baby changes everything everything. It changes the way you view life. It changes your relationships, the way it, it changes your priorities, and it definitely changes your sleep pattern. And we are experiencing that firsthand. I am reminded, church, of how much I enjoy my sleep and I miss my sleep. Uh, that uninterrupted sleep, I am, I am, I'm missing that a great deal. Thankfully, uh, we had Ma P come in. We've had some grandparents help us, uh, but I can tell you, our sleep has been impacted. And I'm ashamed to admit this, church, but um, I am borderline uh, useless when it comes to those middle of the night feedings. Because unlike Ashley, I can fall asleep very quickly. I don't need a 30 minute runway. Uh, I'm like asleep in a deep sleep pretty quickly. And it's, 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 it's sad. It's kind of funny because I really do want to help in those middle of the night feedings at 3 a.m. But I am in a sleep coma. And Ashley, she'll wake me, Chuck, Chuck, it's, it's your feeding. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? And I know this sounds funny, but I'm like, babe, I can't hear you. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> okay. For those people that wear glasses, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I tell you what, when at 3 a.m., when she awakens, when she awakens me to help with that baby feeding, I am stumbling. I am fumbling. I am the, the least coordinated I have ever been. I want to tell you, your, your cell phone falling off your nightstand at 3 a.m is one of the loudest sounds you have ever heard when you're trying to be quiet. And I mean, I've, I've stubbed my toe, I've, I've bumped my head on our bed stand, or on our head, or on the, uh, whatever it's called, the, well, the bed post, there we go. I've bumped my head on that, I've stubbed my toe, I've dropped the formula, it, it's just crazy. But as much as, as funny as that may seem, I believe that you and I, too long, too many of us for too long have been in a sleep coma when it comes to spiritually. And God is saying, it's time to wake up. Did God send this storm of coronavirus? Absolutely not. I don't believe that. Uh, again, God's wrath is not on us, but He will use it. And He is using it to awaken you and I, the people of faith to what matters most, but not just you and I, but to our world, to our nation, to say, wake up. It is time to come out of the darkness because, you know, I've heard this phrase a lot, the new normal. Well, guess what? Our old normal wasn't working and God's not called us to normal. But what God has called us to is what is most important, our faith and our family. Again, our faith, hope, and love are these three things that will remain and love is the greatest of all. We'll get into that in the coming weeks because when you throw out the term essential business, those are essential to you and I as people of God. But I want to encourage you, just as I need to be awakened in the middle of the night to feed my child, you and I need to be awakened to what God has for us. I want to share with you the story of Jonah. I know you're really well familiar with it, but let me help you out with this. It says that in Jonah, I'm going to read, um, right, I'm, I'm not going to read all the chapter, and I may just allude to it for time's sake, uh, but it's really important that you catch the tone and the heartbeat of this message because I believe God wants to do great things through you and I just as He did through Jonah. Do you catch that? Did you hear that? God wants to do big things through you and I, just as He did through Jonah. 
but we'll never accomplish all that God has for us if we're not awakened to who we are in Christ and what he's called us to do. So I'll, I've got a few verses for you before we jump into the story of Jonah. This is what God has called you and I. He's called us complete in Colossians 2.10. He's called us delivered in Ephesians 1 and 7. He's called us a new creation in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He's called us uh, uh, free in John 8.36, forgiven in Colossians 1. He's called us chosen in John 15 and 16, a royal priesthood in 1 Peter 2 and 9, united with Christ, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, a child of God, John 1 and 12, a friend of God, John 15 and 15, and a joint heir with Christ in Ephesians 5, 16. That is who God has called you. You need to say those again out loud. We'll put them on the screen. Hopefully you took notes on that. But God has called you to be uh, great. He's called you forgiven. He's called you loved. He's called you a joint heir. He's called you a friend. We need to take heart of that because if we're going to be awakened for all that God wants us to do during this time, we have to know who God has called us and what he has called us to do. Here's some things that God has called us to do. He's called us to do greater works than Christ, John 14 and 12. He's called us to make disciples, to go baptized and to make disciples, Matthew 28, 19. He's called us to be witnesses in Acts chapter 8. He's called us to love our enemies in Matthew 5, to be the light of the world, a city on the hill, Matthew 5 and 14. Again, church, this is our time. This is an opportunity for a new revival, a great awakening in our nation, a great awakening in our city to come alive into all that God has for us. Here's some more things that God has called us to do. Well, he's called us to abstain from the sinful pleasures of the world, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. He's called us to seek God first. Again, I believe the old normal was that we sought our careers first. We sought uh, uh, opportunities and advancement. We sought uh, entertainment. But now in COVID-19, all that stuff is wiped away. We get to hit the reset button and God is saying, wake up, wake up. I've got something that I've called you to do. Here, here, here it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, we're supposed to flee sexual immorality and sin, the things of this flesh. Again, that would be uh, entertainment, be the salt of the earth. Uh, Matthew 5, he's called us to lay hands on the sick so that they can recover. Mark 16 and 18, there's so much there in just the last few minutes that I share with you. God has called you and I to do some great things. He's called us to, uh, to live in the calling and anointing of greatness that is upon you and I, but we have to be spiritually awake. Unfortunately, I feel like too many of us have fallen asleep. We have been lulled into complacency satisfied with comfort. And God is saying, it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to do what I've called you to do. You've been sleeping on the calling of God. You've been sleeping on the dream that God has called for you. You've been sleeping on the purposes God has for you. And this is an opportunity for you to come out of that sleep coma, spiritually speaking, and be awakened to stay woke to all that God has. Because we don't want to let the Lord's return come upon us like a thief in the night. No, we've got to be alert, clear-headed, and ready to do what God wants to do in and through us. God's Word says that we are joint heirs because of Jesus. We are legally entitled. Entitled. It says that God's spirit will be with and in us. Jesus even said that we're going to do greater things than he did. And to do all of this, we need the power and the endurance of the Holy Spirit. You've heard this scripture all your life probably, maybe even got it on a magnet, but Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, uh, I, I have experienced this in this time with our newborn. Uh, sleep depravity uh, impacts my mood. It impacts my focus. It impacts my productivity. And it's so important that we, uh, when you relay that to spiritual or overlay that with our spiritual world, we can't live spiritually exhausted but we need to wait upon the Lord. We need to get alone with Him. I said it last week's sermon, but revelation and recognition of Jesus in our life comes with communion and intimacy. Uh, one of the ways that we can stay woke as the people of God is to get alone with Him, to get into His presence and to hear His still small voice in our life. You see, most of us, 
who have called upon Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are filled with the Spirit of God. We, are, we have His anointing. We have God-given talents. But unfortunately, too many of us have fallen asleep and we become what I would say is essentially a sleeping giant. It's time for us to not be sleeping giants, but to be the giant killers and giant slayers that God has called us to, uh, to make a giant impact in our world, in our families, because we have something the world cannot offer. We have an eternal hope and faith in Christ. We have a new perspective. Again, I said it last week, but sometimes we need to get where God's at so that we can see what He sees. It is what it is, but it's not what it seems. You've heard that phrase. I know you probably have even had somebody's impacted by dementia. Too many of us are walking around with spiritual dementia. We're a shell of who we used to be or a shell of who God has called us to be. And it's time for us to be awakened, to live in power, to live with a great fervency and awareness, to be vigilant. I said this in last week's sermon, to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Look beyond the surface. Yes, there is a virus. Yes, sir, there are levels of uncertainty. But y'all, we have a level of certainty that people of faith do not have. We, have, we don't have to make decisions based out of fear. We can live in faith. If we can adopt that principle and that mentality to be clear-headed, to understand that we don't, we don't fear or grieve as the world grieves. We have an eternal hope that they don't have because to live is Christ and to die is gain. I, I, Christ suffered so that I wouldn't have to suffer. And whether I'm alive or I'm awake when Christ returns, I know that I spend eternity with Him. When you have that hope, when you have that clear understanding, when you have been awakened to that, that joy that we have that anchors us, we can approach life differently. And we can do some things in this world, in our city, in our families that other unbelievers can't experience. And it's time for you and I to be awakened. Stay woke. Say it to your neighbor at home. Say it to your wife, your husband. Say it to your kids. Say it to that future husband or wife that you want. Maybe if you're at home, stay woke woke. All right. Now, that was a long delay, but I'm getting to the story of Jonah. Here we go. Jonah, uh, again, I'm going to just allude to this passage of scripture. I'm not going to go into all of it, but Jonah, you know the story well. Jonah, a voice of God comes to him and says, hey, I want you to go to Nineveh. And what does Jonah do? He runs and he goes in the opposite direction. He goes to a city called Tarshish, and he pays the fare and gets on a boat headed in the opposite direction. I think that's crazy, uh, but it's, it describes so many of us. God has called us to do some things, and we say, wait a minute, hold up. I'll do that later, or I'm not ready for it. And God's saying, no, do this. I've got a plan for you. I've got big things. You are a giant in the kingdom of God. You have some things. Be awoke. Be woke to this. And we're like, uh, I'll do that later. I've got more time. I'll get to that later. I, that's uncomfortable for me. I don't know how all that, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, and, and we go in the opposite direction. I saw Lamine this week as it relates to COVID-19. It said, um, okay, whoever's supposed to go to Nineveh and hasn't, would you please go? Isn't that funny? Because that's, that's really, we, we call this a storm. We call, the presidents call it the invisible enemy. And we're like, can we get back to what we were doing? And I say to you and I, God is awakening us and he is calling some of us to Nineveh to do some big things and we've got to stop running from it. But just like Jonah paid the fare to go in the opposite direction, you and I, if we haven't done it recently, we have done it in times past. Maybe you contemplated saying, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I would rather go in the opposite direction. Isn't that what happens? Too many of us, God has called us to do some things and we say, I, I, I'm going hit, to hit the pause button and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Somebody that may be God's called you to start a business. For some of you, God has called you to leave a relationship that's unhealthy. And for somebody else, it may be God has called you to go and ad adopt a child or to do some faith-filled adventure. And rather than pursuing all that God has, you, you say, hold on, I'm going to do something else. And we are willing to pay the price for that mistake. Just as Jonah, he, he got on the boat headed in the opposite direction from God and he paid the fare. 
Y'all, we cannot afford to do this. It is never too late to abandon ship and jump back in and run to what God is calling us to do. And I believe now is that perfect time to be awakened to that, to hit that reset button and say, God, I've been going away from you. Uh, You've been calling me to deeper things in your word. And I've allowed the busyness of life. I've allowed other things to take first place in my life. But you called me to seek you first and I'm jumping back in. I'm staying woke to what you have, you are calling me to do. It says that Jonah boarded the ship. There comes a great storm. And the people were freaking out. Jonah finally confesses and says, hey, it's me. Throw me overboard. They throw him overboard. He gets uh, rescued by a great fish. Okay. Call it a whale, call it a great fish, whatever you want. But here's the thing in scripture, you can read it. God sends the storm and he sends the fish. If you are willing to abandon ship from the things that God has been calling or from running from the ship that God, excuse me, if you are willing to abandon the ship that is running in the opposite direction, I'm believing that God will send a great rescue. He will send a great fish to see that you are provided for. He's not going to leave you hanging. I I read this in some of my old notes just this week. The great things God is calling you to do also require God. So you don't have to go at this alone. God is with you. All right. It says that they threw him overboard in the belly of this great fish. Guess what? Jonah, he doesn't come to his senses on day one. You would think that in the belly of this fish, he would finally say, okay, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm praying to you. I should have done this a long time ago. He doesn't do that on day one. He doesn't do it on day two. You would think after one day in the belly of the fish, one night, a second day, a second night, finally he would come to his senses. No, but it's not until the third day in the fish, his belly, that he says, okay, God, forgive me. And guess what? When he does, the fish spits him up on the shore and the voice of God gives him the same word. He says, go to Nineveh and preach the good news. I have people there waiting. I'm wanting to do something big in their life. I'm thankful that just like Jonah, God has given you and I a second chance. He's given you and I this opportunity in this season to say, hey, I, I, you've not been doing what I want. You've been spiritually asleep. You've been sleeping on the call and purpose that I have for you, but it is time to stay woke and I'm giving you another chance. It's the same message. It's the same call. It's the same dream. Some of you, you've been wondering, what is the will of God for my life? If you take an inventory of your life, you know what it is because it's the same thing that God told you when you were a young a teenager, maybe 16. Maybe it's the same thing God told you three months ago that you haven't been fulfilling. Be awakened to that right now. Look back and what is God saying to you that you haven't stepped up and done because you are a spiritual giant. Stop sleeping on the things that God wants you to do and stay woke to what God is calling you to do in this season. What's happens in in Jonah chapter four is really interesting because Jonah goes into Nineveh. Scripture says it's an increasingly large city. It says 120,000 plus. Uh, It says that in scholars believe that it would have taken about three days journey, three days journey just to get across the city of Nineveh. But what happens? Jonah follows the commandment of God in, in one day, the entire city hears the message and everyone comes into repentance. What does that say to you and I? I believe if we will step out and do what God has called us to do, he can do some things in a shortened amount of time that in in theory would have taken much longer. I think that applies to our nation. It's a message of repentance. Okay. If we, again, second Corinthians uh, I mean, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. that's why we've been praying it. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land and forgive their sins. Church, if we will do what God is calling us to do as individuals, as the people of God, there are going to be some, there's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a revival and God can do in an instant what would have otherwise taken months or years or seasons to do. Something supernatural can happen if we will be awakened to God's call and God's purpose. Stop sleeping on it. Stop putting it off. Stop running in the other direction and go run toward what all God has for you. Look at it with a new perspective and a new light. I I close with this. You and I 
have the opportunity. We have everything that God, ha- we have everything that we need to do that g- the will of God in our life. We've been called, we've been chosen, we're loved and for- we're forgiven. Now it's time to live out our God-designed destiny. It's time for us to walk out our faith, do greater things than Christ, pray big prayers and believe God is big enough to answer them. It's time for us to live pure. It's time for us to make disciples, to be witnesses, to lay hands on sick and to pray for healing, to speak to mountains, to worship, to serve, to do the b- big things. Again, uh, maybe it is for you to launch out a business. Maybe it is for you to go and adopt a child. Maybe it's something more uh, practical that God has been calling you to a time of intimate relationship with Him to start a daily Bible study. Some of you, it is the, the practical practice, the practice of living holy and set apart and stop uh, cluttering or fil- uh, 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 seeing your mind f- uh, cluttered and filtered with debris or the things of this world. Stumbled over my words there, but you and I know the truth is we've been called to live pure lives and too many of us have been spiritually asleep. We've been filling our minds with the things that are unholy, things that are uh, unpure or impure. And God is saying, no, I've called you to something. You are a giant. You see in scripture, we know the story of David and Goliath. It's a story of giants, right? And it's amazing because David He does something unthinkable. Here he is, a young lad, a shepherd boy, and he walks into the camp of the Israelites and he hears as he's serving serving his brothers uh, a meal and he brought uh, uh, resources to the camp of the Israelites. He hears across the canyon, across the valley, there is this giant. His name is Goliath and he comes out and he says, come on, send out a man on the field. I'll fight them one on one. And if I win then you'll serve the Philistines. If you win, then we will serve the Israelites. And it's amazing because everyone is cowarding in fear. They were asleep to the purpose and the plan of God for their life. But David, he, he's awakened to not, not even so much about the God's call for his life, but more so he's awakened to the God who is on the side of the Israelites. Do you know that God is for you? The God who is in you can do greater things than that which is against you. But here's the thing that I find really interesting. I'm not going to go to it in Scripture, but you can read the story. Is the story about Saul. I believe rather than the story of David and Goliath, it should have been the story of Saul and Goliath. Because when Saul was anointed king, Scripture says that he was head and shoulders taller than all the rest. Did you catch that? Saul was a giant among his own people. He had a plan of God for his life. He was God's chosen first king of Israel. And yet he fell asleep on his purpose. He fell asleep on God's plan for his life to lead the children of Israel. Come on, you and I, we have maybe fallen asleep on what God wants to do in us. And God's saying, I've got something great for you. Don't put it off to the next generation. Don't try to put the plan that I have and the armor that I've given you off on the next generation like Saul tried to do with David. No, be awakened to the giant that you and I have been called to be. If people of faith, giants in the faith, giants in our city right now, when there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of fear, we are people of faith. We have a hope that anchors us, unlike that of the world. I want to pray for you, those of you today that uh, have been asleep. I want to pray for those of you, maybe that you are awakened. And and I believe God's going to do something special in your life. Let me just say a general prayer first and foremost. And then as I close, I want to say one final prayer for those who want to make a fresh start and put Jesus at the center of their life. So if you will, will you bow your heads with me? And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray through your divine strength that these that have walked to the, uh, that are watching online, that they will conquer their enemies. I pray that they will begin to accomplish all that they have, that you have for them, that they will stop delaying and they will start pursuing. Lord, I pray that they would be awakened. Maybe they've been living in fear of the, of the what ifs. Lord, I pray that, that that would be calmed and there would be a new resolute uh, uh, 
patience and, and steadfastness in their heart, knowing that you are for them and that you are not against them. I pray that those that have been, uh, uh, they've been spiritually exhausted because of all the other things that they have filled their life. Lord, I pray that they would hit a reset button and they would come into a time of intimacy, which would bring about great recognition and revelation in their hearts and spirits. Lord, I thank you for an awakening across the nation. Lord, for the people of faith that we don't, we don't fret and worry as the world worries and frets because we have this new hope, a hope of eternal salvation. You gave your life so that we wouldn't have to suffer the wrath of God, but instead we have the promise of eternal salvation. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for those that have been contemplating different things over the last few weeks or months, maybe even years. And you sent me to share this message with them to say, stay woke, don't give up, don't go in the opposite direction, but instead abandon the ship that they're on that's going in the wrong direction and pursue all that God has for them. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the assurance that we have in your word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, a good amen. A good amen. Amen, amen. All right, as we close today, I, well, I told you I wanted to say a fresh start prayer. Uh, and I want to remind you of what I opened the sermon with, this idea that as a, as a husband and a father with a newborn, there are times where I really struggle waking up in the middle of the night. And that's because, man, I'm just like in a sleep coma. But my wife is saying, hey, our son needs to be fed. It's time. Wake up. Right now is the time. I believe in the same way God is has sent me to be a, a spiritual ambassador, awakened to my calling as a pastor and the shepherd of this, to feed those who are hungry and looking and searching for the spiritual nourishment. Maybe that's you today. You haven't had a strong relationship with God. Maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ. Well, God has awakened me and my spirit to come to you and say, hey, I, our God is not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. And he moved heaven and earth to save your soul. And the way that happens is if you put your faith completely and wholly in him. That amazing story about Jonah, what happens is Jonah goes in in, in Jonah chapter 4 and he preaches a, a message of repentance to a people that had really hurt his family and his family's legacy. They were their enemies, the people of Nineveh. And God stirs his heart and they come to repentance. My prayer for you today is that whether you've known about God or maybe you're completely new to God, you would understand that when you come to repentance and complete reliance on who God is, guess what? He will grant to you great forgiveness. Scripture says that his mercies cover all of our sins, a multitude of sins. But you got to put your faith in Jesus. You got to come to repentance and, and come to the realization of, man, I've been running away from God and I'm going to pursue all that God has. So will you say this fresh start prayer with me today? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I recognize my need for your grace and for your mercy. Forgive me of my sins and those things that I have done that are contrary to your will. Lord, I'm giving you complete control of my life. Take the reins and give me a fresh start. Thank you for this second chance. Thank you for new beginnings. I put my faith wholly in your son, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And everybody said, Amen. Come on, would you put your hands together all across the room? We rejoice with those who maybe made that fresh start decision. We would love to follow up with you. If you did make that fresh start decision today, be sure and text us. Text GB Fresh Start to 97000. We'd love to follow up with you and help you in your journey uh, in this thing that we call a fresh start with God. Again, thank you for joining in, tuning in. We love you. I pray that the Lord would bless you and that His face would keep you and shine down upon you during this time. We'll see you next week.